Hi everyone, Carl here with some more Let's Play Sonic Mania. So this is one of the new zones in Sonic Mania, Press Garden Zone. A zone that basically has one of my favourite soundtracks ever. Out of any of the Sonic zones so far, and quite possibly out of all the classic Sonic games I've played. The aesthetic of the zone is that of an old industrial cell printing press. I don't know what Robotnik really wants for the printing press, or if it was one he created himself, or if it was just around to begin with. But, you know, considering the world consists of largely anthropomorphic animals and actual animals, and he appears to be the only human in it, one would think it's of his own creation. Animals gotta read, I guess. So yeah, look in the background, you can basically see all the covers of the newspapers flying around with Sonic's picture all over them. Probably Robotnik giving his anti-hedgehog propaganda again. So yeah, these elements of the level are reminiscent of stuff that was in Carnival Night Zone, where the further from the centre you are, the more momentum you build up. Now see, I know this now, but at the time I was recording this, I must have forgotten how these things worked, because, as you can see, I'm clearly struggling with some of these. So try and take a spin dash up there to see what happens, and we can see there's actually a closed door in front of us. So we need to sort that out. So I'm guessing there's got to be something up there to open it. Try again. Yep, definitely a closed door, and there's the bulb we need to break. So we're going to try and smash it. We smash it. The door's open. Now we just got to get up there. Try and get up again. Nope, not enough momentum. Uh, you know, we're going to try and jump up there now. But of course it helps if we actually hit the platforms. Jumped up onto that, but obviously just too far into the middle for it to get go anywhere. Try and hit that. There we are on that one. Now all we need to do is jump and hit that one, but no. Nope. We're just going to hit the ceiling instead. Bounce off that, get up there. Damn it, Cal, learn how to hedgehog. Make sure you can go up there, there we go. Yep. Oh no. Oh, ooh, near missing the spikes there. So we'll just pick up speed in the spin dash and go. Ah, we make it. Celebratory jump there. And some unused Sonic 1 enemies there, the rabbits, jumping their way out of an ink pot. So we just got this way now, seeing as he broke the uh, the bulb for the door. Take the momentum, go over this, oh, hit the spikes. All that stuff there, and I chose to hit the spikes. I don't know. Right, we'll go this way. Wait till we get there, hit, hit the conveyor belts. Ah, these are a new element. The letters popping themselves out to form platforms. Just go this way, hit that. Jump over that one, get the checkpoint. And there's a nasty press there that could have caused problems if we'd stayed in there. And yet again we use Sonic's favourite anti-slowdown method, just hit the spikes. Break that, get the platforms going. Just try and see what's up here. There's got to be some sort of secret up here for it to actually have encouraged us to go this way. No. Oh, we can't hit that. Oh, foil by the conveyor belts. Damn you. Let's go this way. Oh, hit those. And that sends us up here. Straight into another crushing press. Just go through here. Love how those basically sprang us up there without any difficulty. So yeah, like I was saying, I love what T. Lopes has done with the music for the stage. He has surpassed himself elsewhere in the game, mainly in the second act. I won't go into too much detail for the guys who have yet to have played this game or seen any videos of it. If you haven't played this game, I have to ask what's wrong with you. Quite frankly, this is awesome. But he does exceed himself in Act 2, which you will hear soon enough. I don't want to say too much more, but uh, it'll be worth the wait. So we're just going to go up this way now, get 
take all the momentum from that. Oh. Let's try and go up this way. Can we get there? Nope. It the spring, that didn't work the plan. But well, we're gonna go down here. Tails has decided as soon as he shot down there. Some more momentum. Let's break these. Ah, spring. Can't get the extra life, but we're gonna try and uh, get there anyway. Kill the crabs with the saw blades. Try again. Nope. Definitely no way of getting an extra life. So we go this way. Down the slope. Oh, hit that. Now those guys are in Mushroom Hill Zone in Sonic and Knuckles. That's another thing I like about the game, that even if they don't necessarily use the zone, they still have use for the badniks. And that's always a good thing, because you still get to see awesome enemies that you may not have normally seen had they not used the zone and just not used the badniks in anywhere else. I gotta get that last crab. Get him. Good job, Tails. Smash them again, and down we go through the checkpoint. Hit the spring. We'll go this way. Use the momentum again down that slope. Quick round again. So there's lots of these areas like this where they just loop round in themselves and then give you more momentum, go down and round and back onto another slope. And there's a checkpoint there. Let's go and grab some boost for you, shall we? Oh, you know, just hit the pinball bumper and then just go back onto a red sphere. Too early. Oh, there's a pit. And now it's boss time for Act 1. So as you can see there, it just smashed its saw blades. So that's basically the whole principle of this fight. When it goes for the grey crates, it will smash them. But when it goes for the orange and brown crates, it will smash the saw blade. So we have to go in and hit it then when it's weakest. Ah, smash. Oh, go in. Hit it. Hit it. Try again. There we go. Dive in. There it goes. And big explosion. And everyone died. Nope, they're still alive. But is that snow? Are those petals? Oh yeah, like I said, prepare yourself for this because this I feel is my favourite track in Sonic Mania right now and arguably the best one I've heard on the soundtrack to date. Like I said, we're only about halfway through the game, but it's going to take some beating for this zone I think. As we go out into the great unknown. Oh yeah. Traditional Japanese landscape. Blossoms. Petals. Awesome music to go with it. Just... Oh. And dart traps apparently. Let's try and get up there again. Oh! Oh, and there's our first death. Not at all an excuse to hear this breakdown again. So yeah, we're just going to go this way. Dodge the dart to stem. And two, one. Yeah, that's just... It's just great. I actually watched a live stream a couple of weeks ago now. I believe it was last Saturday. Where t Love basically composed this from scratch on stream using the tools he has. And I just wish I had half of the talent that guy had because it was just phenomenal. Seeing the process of how he put it all together. Just hats off to him then. So we use the fire shield now to basically smash some of these spikes up. 
But then I think, oh, I can do this with a shield and fail miserably. Smash the to get the rings back and then run on the spikes again. Tails give me a bit of a lift. Take the crabs out. But yeah, I just love the whole aesthetic that the combination of the music and the level gives. It's just really, really good. Just awesome, basically. So, and the fact it actually takes things like these, which I believe are an ice cap zone, that allowed you to basically just fly around in a block of ice and just smash anything that got in your way. Speaking of blocks of ice, there's some there. Hmm. How are we going to get rid of them? Ah, well, this is the beauty of it, see? We'll just jump over there now and head towards this direction. We'll find another spring. That's... Slamming sideways into them doesn't work, even if you spring, so... And hit the woodpecker there. Just smash that one too. Go down here. So we know the hitting those springs takes us down back to where we were now. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to head back over this way. Oh, that was close. Don't want to hit that monitor there. Kicking the petals up when he's running, man, it's just... This stage is just awesome. Ah, now there's a spring there. So that's not exactly working right now, but we're going to try and get a bit more momentum to get through this and then hit the spring. So we'll do this, and there we go. It's like some demented Sonic mouse trap. There we get out, or maybe hedgehog trap, I'm not sure. Let's grab some more blue spheres. 127 spheres to start. Hmm. Nice straightforward group here. Just run through here now. Nice little path to get round. <laughs> Another easy group. Jump over here. Go like a hedgehog, Sonic. Well, wind or hedgehog or one of the two. Round here. Watch yourself. Whoa. Oh. Pinball bumper craziness. Nope, oh, stop, stop, stop. Oh. <sighs> Gross incompetence strikes again. Yay. So, yeah. We're just going to keep going now because we're getting close to the boss now, I believe, at this point. And one interesting little bit of trivia found out about the boss is the sound effects that they used for. This guy, who's basically one of the hard-boiled heavies, the, the robots that we met right at right the start, and one of the guys we took on in Studiopolis, is because of the aesthetic of him, they didn't actually just use Sonic sound effects for him. They actually used sound effects from Shinobi, or at least one of the Mega Drive Shinobi games, which I find is just really cool because I know the game's sort of selling point is that it's a love letter to classic Sonic titles, but they're, they're actually calling back to older Genesis and Mega Drive games as well, which is just really cool, because, I mean, the 16-bit era is a really good time in games. I mean, I had a Super Nintendo myself, but I still was able to play and enjoy many of the Sonic games, either on my friends' machines or even playing Sonic games on the Master System. Which I know a lot of people seem to think are, like, not as good, but I think they are good in their own way. Anyway, here's the boss. So you see there's these fancy flips. And the key to it is basically hitting him as he's flipping. If you don't, he just catches it with his katana there, which freezes you. Like that, see? That knocks him down, and then you hit him and hit there. But you're really going to hit him once, and then as you try to damage him, he'll start throwing these shuriken around. Which you can see are the explosive stars from Metropolis on Sonic 2. Oh, this could be a problem. He's not going to kill me like this, but 
It's a pain. We take another hit there. Now he's throwing three of them around. Let's see, me being frozen probably saved me there. I think if I'd have not been frozen and taken that hit, I think I would have died. Oh. Definitely we're gonna die if I keep taking those sorts of hits. I hit him there. And get him and he's down. And there's a the shinobi sound effect there. Really cool. So let's go free the animals. They're over here, so. And it's a massive thing full of flickies. Because, you know, forest, lots of flickies. So where are we going now? Little planet? Metal Sonic? Where could it be? Let's find out next time on Carl Plays Sonic Mania. Have a good day.